on the roof at Gary and Julie Weiss's house at 1000 Indian Oaks. I made a bunch of notes up on the roof for you guys. I want to start going over that now. I have a reminder arrow here to talk about um, basically the granules or the amount of granules that have washed off the roof and have landed in the gutters. Uh, so you can see there that there's like a good amount, a solid amount of granules that have washed off. The important thing about the granules is that in every sense of the word, the granules are your sunblock for your house. Once you lose the granules, the protective chemicals in the asphalt shingles start to leach out, and then the shingles start to become extraordinarily brittle, almost like saltine crackers. And so that's why it's really important um, to talk about that because the next symptom that I found, and I literally didn't have to get off the ladder to find it, is I very gently start looking for what's called lift up. Just like these guys here, here. Look at this whole section of shingle, right from the ladder. So you mentioned that you had somebody come out and look at your roof a couple months ago. It doesn't take a rocket scientist or even get off your ladder to see that you do have a substantial amount of uh, granule loss and lift up on, on your roof. Uh, here's just wear, damage and wear. Uh, I'd, I'd run out of chalk quick if I went around and marked all the, the wear marks, but I mean, we're literally down to the asphalt here. You can see them all here. Here's more of the, the same lift up. Well, look at this whole section here, just hanging on. Oh, I don't think I clarified that. Once you lose this adhesive bond between the back of the shingle and the roof itself, it's gonna keep flopping around until eventually it wears hinge marks into the shingles and then they'll break off. So uh, hurricane season, pretty much anything over 50 miles an hour, tropical storm uh, speed or more, these shingles are gonna start to lift and then break off just like little, little sections are starting to do right now. Let's go this way. Uh, maybe you're using the direct TV dish. If you do decide to get a new roof, we can gladly remove and dispose of that. Otherwise, your homework would be just call direct TV and have it relocated. These areas on all the magnolias are so vitally important. These are called dead areas. And we're replacing these on all of all of the homes. It goes to goes to say that replacing the flashing here, replacing the flashing here is so vitally important that you don't get leaks in the future. A lot of homeowners in Pine Creek have had leaks in those areas. Lift up. We replace the white drip edge with your new roof. Here's the other dead area. These are called off ridge vents. These essentially are four foot wide open windows into your attic. These have been proven not to be the best method to vent your attic. So on all of our re-roofs, like, like Pat and Stevens and Francis, we get rid of these, we restore the, the um, what, where there's no plywood underneath, and then we do the top attic ridge vent along the entire top of the roof. Every single new roof that you see in this entire neighborhood will have the top ridge vent with these removed. There's actually one exception over here on Shawnee that they didn't do it right. So we're gonna take care of that. Here's more of that diagonal lift up, wear, lift up. We're going to replace all the gooseneck style vents. We're gonna reboot all the bathroom vents. Plus we're gonna paint all of the, um, all the vents on the roof to match. It's a very nice charcoal slate color. Uh, there's some hideous dark green ones in here, but ours look a lot, lot better more of the lift up. In this section here, hopefully you can see it. There's a lot of play in the plywood. So um, again, we're, we'll talk more about the plywood, but as a community, we're offering unlimited plywood replacement. You can actually thank Pat for that because they had a substantial amount of plywood. And then right here, there's a there's a there's almost a peak underneath the shingle. So that, that begs to be looked at right here, by the way. Two things over here. I actually came down here and took photos of all the screens. There's no marks and holes in them, um, but I forgot to take photos at Francis's house and uh, we ended up replacing all of the screens on her lanai um, because we believe that there was pieces of shingle that went through them. So we're gonna be very careful in the future. But look at this. There is literally inches of granules that have been caked up and now have turned into mud. Um, from the roof in the gutter now. More of the lift up. And then basically more of the same over here. 
you can literally see from afar what lift up looks like and then more of the same allow me for the next 20 seconds or so to talk about how we're going to redo your roof correctly forgive my metal example we're only going to use your favorite color hunter green which is right here by the way quick little comparison we use a very aesthetically pleasant hunter green shingle have you noticed how blotchy some of these other companies shingles are like really stark contrast if you get a chance go look at pat's house or jim and Jeannie hicks house it's a very aesthetically smooth pleasing look compared to this blotchiness uh i, I don't like it i don't like the way it looks um by the way we use the certainty landmark series shingle real quick uh, allow me to talk about how we're going to redo your roof correctly again imagine us removing all the shingles getting down to the bare plywood we're going to inspect that troublesome area this area here as well as the dead areas we're going to replace those anything remotely bad we're going to replace you're not going to be charged extra for plywood in pine creek you can thank your neighbors for that power of the community there's two building codes in the neighborhood that have been upgraded since you bought your home the first one is called renail roof to code that's when we're gonna renail the plywood to your roof trusses. The code says six inches, we go every four to five inches. We're gonna double, triple the number of nails holding your plywood to your roof trusses. And then most importantly, probably, is the waterproof barrier. Every inch of this bare plywood roof is gonna be covered with waterproof barrier. Maybe you've heard of the term peel and stick. And then we're gonna put your 30 year hunter green shingles on top of that. In the event, it's not a question of if, but only a matter of when we do get a hurricane. Even if you do sustain damage with that waterproof barrier, it's not gonna allow any water inside the house. Once it's placed on wood, it permanently adheres to it and creates a watertight, waterproof barrier. Really good. So that's a really good overview. Oh, by the way, I keep meaning to mention that um, when you do have a new roof, you get a substantial insurance discount. So after your new roof is done, it's always best to call your insurance company, send them proof that you got your new roof, and that way you get the wind mitigation discount. Thanks.